what an honor it is to uh, be invited to share on what I think is a, a very important topic, and it's this, how can we be heard from those who are in authority above us? So if you're taking notes, I want to encourage you to just kind of title it this way, earning the right to be heard. How can we earn the right to be heard by those who are in authority above us? And really, I think it's, it's really balancing this tension of, of wanting to honor our leaders, honor their position, honor their role, honor what God has called them to do, but also how can we create an environment where really I can bring my best ideas so that kind of we can be the church or the ministry or maybe even the business that God has called us to be. So I'm super stoked to share for just a few minutes about this. Let, let me share just a bit of, of my story. was raised in a pastor's family and uh, when I graduated college I, I had the tremendous privilege of serving at Hillcrest Assembly in Bremerton where my, my pastor that I served under was actually the same guy who dedicated me as a baby. So I had known him for years upon years and had a chance to serve with him as his youth pastor. And it was a more traditional church, a bit of a smaller church, but a great church that was really doing some really cool things. Served there for a couple of years. And then I went on staff in 2000 to Bethany Christian Assembly in Everett, where I served for 13 years with Rob Carlson. I served as his youth pastor for a few years and then associate and senior associate after that, and that was uh, more uh, of the type of church, very similar to what I was raised with, and so had a great time there serving for 13 years. So really have been a staff pastor for like 15 years. So majority of, of my ministry experience has been as a staff pastor, and it's been my heart, it's been my goal to be a blessing to those pastors to really uh, respect them and recognize that God has called them and how can I bless them? How can I be a blessing to my pastor? How can I support the vision that God has placed on their heart? And then the last uh, five years, I've uh, been the lead pastor of Stone Church in Yakima. So just a shout out to the Palm Springs of Washington there. And uh, really, uh, I, I, I'm stoked to share about this because I, I serve with a staff that's really practicing much of these principles and really all of these principles. So what I'm going to talk about, uh, really the staff that I work with day in and day out, they really exemplify all of this. So, so here's what I give is just five ways that I think we can earn the right to be heard from those in authority above us, and they all start with the letter C. So here they are. Number one is this. I want to talk about the importance of credibility. Really be sure that you have credibility, and I, I would also put this, you want to excel in your, in your area of responsibility. So it begins by having credibility and excelling in your area of responsibility. I remember this is a number of years ago, uh, was was serving and we had we had a new guy come on staff at our church and was in the area of of media and, and he had been there like only a couple of weeks I mean homie barely knew where the bathrooms were and, and, and so he was serving in media and within a couple of weeks he actually emailed our pastor kind of sharing some different ways that he could do better as a communicator and better as a preacher now, the you know, pastor kind of, you know, understood he was, you know, trying to do the best he could. But really, that didn't go so well. Why? Because he had not been there long enough to establish his credibility. Credibility is key. And there's a variety of ways that I think we, we build credibility. We do that through longevity, through, through serving for a number of years, being a volunteer in a ministry for a number of years, that builds credibility. And then a, another important way that we build credibility is just by excelling 
in the tasks that we're given in our area of responsibility. In fact, listen to what the Bible says in Colossians 3. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Now, this is a kid's kids conference and I think a, a great example of this point is actually our our kids pastor Matt Alexander uh, he has tremendous credibility in my eyes he has served as a volunteer uh, by vocational and then he was you know part-time and now he's you know full-time you know at the church as our kids pastor and he is doing an awesome job. I mean, there's great volunteers in kids' ministry. There's enthusiasm in kids' ministry. There's life and, and energy. In fact, there are families who I know for a fact, they've told me, hey, they come to Stone Church because of our kids' ministry. It's not the music. It's not the preaching. It's all about the kids' ministry, and they made that very clear. So, so Matt's got great credibility in my mind. So when just a few months ago, we're heading to lunch, and Matt just kind of makes himself available and says, if there's ever an opportunity to lead kind of outside of kids or do something more all church in addition to my kids' role, I'd be open to, to doing that. And so when he says that, man, I take note. I listen because he's excelling in his current area. And right now we're in a, we do a spiritual journey every fall. And right now we're in a spiritual journey called Paradox. We're walking through the Sermon on the Mount. And, and we kind of just put like a, a, a sermon series on steroids, if you will. And we're life groups and daily readings. And we, we sell these books that we kind of put together. And, and part of this also is is we have eight different community outreaches, calling them paradox outreaches, just to, to love and bless our community and mobilize our church. And so Matt is leading that entire effort of our paradox outreaches in addition to his kids' role. He's demonstrated great credibility. So first and foremost, excel in your area of responsibility. Number two is this, would you write this down? Curiosity. It begin the credibility and then really demonstrate curiosity. Okay, write that down along with it. Ask questions and demonstrate a desire to learn. Proverbs 4, 7 says this, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. Though it cost all you have, get understanding. Okay, as we demonstrate a real desire to learn, we really will endure ourselves to our leader. So make it a point, make it a point to ask questions of your boss, ask questions of your pastor, ask questions of your leader. Here's why curiosity is so important. I think it's important to write down. Your leader sees things from a perspective that you don't have. Let, let me say that again. Your leader sees things from a perspective you don't have. Something else to write down would be this, visit the bridge. Imagine that, that a, a, a church, in a sense, is like one big ship trying to kind of move forward and, and make progress and move towards a destination. And what can happen sometimes is that you have these different ministries that are kind of operating in their own kind of room or space or compartment, if you will. And you get all these different leaders or pastors and, and they're working so hard in their area of responsibility. And man, they're, they're doing great work and, and they're getting volunteers, they have passion. But if we only remain in our department or our compartment, kind of the totality of our perspective is right there. What's helpful is like there's a bridge on a ship to at times kind of step out of our compartment, step out of our department, and go up and visit the bridge because the pastor or the leader or the boss is on the bridge kind of looking out to where you're going, kind of looking out, trying to kind of steer the ship 
towards its destination. So as you go up and visit the bridge and try to really see things for, from your leader or your pastor or your boss's perspective, it gives you a perspective that you would not have if you remain just in your area. So have tried to encourage you know, our pastors from time to time to not view themselves as department pastors, if you will, but really view themselves as pastors of our entire church. View themselves as, as staff pastors carrying the vision. And, and again, our team has really done well with this. If you look at our, our church, you know, our, our kids and our youth and our adult, we all have the same vision statement, helping people find and follow Jesus, helping kids find and follow Jesus, or, or helping students find and follow Jesus. So there's a sense of, uh, of cohesion and, and unity there. And uh, our student ministry right now, they are, we're doing this spiritual journey called Paradox as a church, and they are also doing the spiritual journey in their student ministry. Again, just really seeing things from the perspective of the entire church and not just getting locked in my own department. So number two is, is curiosity. Number three is this. Would you write down character? Approach them in the right way. Character. So we start credibility, curiosity, and then character. So how do we approach our leader, our pastor, or our boss? Well, here's what I think is so important. Write this down. Right time, right place, in the right way. Right time, right place, in the right way. Man, I want our team to share their best ideas. Man, I want our pastors, I, I want to hear all their best ideas. Man, I hope that we are creating an environment where they can share their ideas and their perspective, perspectives because they also have a perspective that I don't have. So I, I want to create a, a sense of freedom. So when our pastors gather, there's forthright dialogue. But what I think is so important is really approaching those conversations in the right time, right place, and in the right way. So uh, I would hope that they would know not to approach me with a big, difficult conversation on like a Sunday morning before church, you know, or before a, a major event. Man, I, I, man I, I, we can have forthright dialogue back and forth, and we've done that very thing. But I encourage, I encourage our team, look, man, let's do that. Maybe if we got to kind of have a heart-to-heart, -heart, let's do it behind closed doors. In fact, something I would write down is this. Here's kind of a good just rule of thumb. Celebrations publicly concerns privately. Celebrations publicly concerns privately privately man we can just really have a heart to heart but i am as a leader or as a pastor i'm less defensive if we're not having that conversation before a big crowd of people you know so i think that's super important and, and the right way i think humility is so important i think approaching with humility the bible says in in Ephesians 4, it says, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Instead, speaking the truth in love. I think that is the key that we really uh, approach things with love and able to really differentiate what is really in open-handed item versus a closed-handed items. In life, I think, in ministry, there, there, there's both of those. There, there's items that are closed-handed. What that means is really there's no room for discussion. Man, just being a person of character, right? Uh, in marriage, respect, we need to hold, hold very firmly. Closed-handed items would be those item, items where there's a clear right from wrong. But then in life and ministry, there's also open-handed items where there's maybe no clear right from wrong, okay? It's a matter of preference. Some, in church, some open-handed items might be a style of music, uh, what, what, what a, you know, the pastoral staff should dress like, 
you know, how, how do you close a service on a Sunday morning? These are open-handed items. Realize that, man, is this idea or perspective I have, is this close-handed or open-handed, really approaching with, with humility in the right way, in an honoring, loving way. Number four is this, conviction. Would you write this down? Don't give them more work. Conviction. Do not give them more work. Here's a phrase I don't like. Here's what I think you should do. I want to say, you know, I think I got enough to do already. Okay? And here's be willing to show that you're willing to do more than just share your opinion. Be willing to show that you'll do more than just share your opinion. So I think there's two things. Okay? Bring your solutions and bring your availability. Bring your solutions and bring your availability. Man, show that this is more than just talk, but be willing to say, you know what? I have an idea for our church, and here's how maybe I think that we can make this happen, and would you be okay if I kind of take the lead on it? Man, that is, that would be awesome. And bring your availability to say, man, I I can create space in my calendar and what I'm doing to really take the lead. Here's a solution and here's my availability. Is this something that jives with you? Because if it does, I can report back and share updates and progress. And man, to me as pastor, that's a fun conversation. I mean, how we can expand and grow if it's within the overall vision of the church. If you will help solve it and bring availability, man, I'm all ears. Lastly, uh, number five is this chemistry. Man, chemistry is so important. Write this down right next to it, would you? Encourage and be loyal to your leader. Encourage and be loyal to your leader. We we look for three things in in every staff member. Uh, They're not original with us, but we found them to be very helpful. It's character, competence, and chemistry. We found that each of those is very important. Obviously, character is is crucial. Who we are just before the Lord and and being a person of of Christ-likeness. You know, competence is super important. If you can't do your job, it's probably not gonna work out too well. But something that we feel is also important is is chemistry. Man, do do they fit with our team? Do they jive with our team? Could could they just be a great person of, of chemistry? And one way that we really help, you know, chemistry is being a person who celebrates wins and encourages others around us. Don't just be heard from when something's going wrong, but really be a person who can speak well. I would say this, lead pastors, uh, your, your, your pastor of really maybe the department that you serve in, okay, your boss, man, they are all flesh and blood. Okay, and so they like to be encouraged as well. So really speak well of them. I think a good biblical example of this is in, in Exodus 17 when you have Moses and you have the Israelites and they're battling the, the Amalekites. And you got Aaron and her holding up the arms of Moses. And when his arms are up, they're winning. You know, but when they're down, they're not. And so, man, they are they're lifting up the arms of their leader. And I would say a a great way for us to help win the day, win the battles, is by encouraging and supporting and lifting up the arms of our leader. So speak well of them. Man, don't, don't speak death or don't gossip. Man, speak well of our leader. Speak, speak well of our church. Speak well of our, our ministry. It's been talked about in, in parenting, how kind of they, they, they view the encouragement and, and discipline thing with, with deposits and withdrawals in a bank. And that a lot of our, our, our time should be spent really depositing encouragement into our kids. Because every now and then we got to discipline or, or, or share a heart with them. And there's going to be kind of some withdrawals, if you will, from their emotional bank account. And I think that's just a good, really life practice to be sure that we are a person who's speaking life and encouragement into those around us. Let's be people that make things better. So those are a few principles. I've kind of just 
been a staff pastor, now I'm a lead pastor that I think really will help kind of create just a, a, a base on the ground for, for respecting and honoring our leader, but also bringing our best ideas, bring our perspective so the kingdom of God can be advanced. And so thank you so much. Thank <music> you.